So, I almost wrecked my airplane the other day. And this is the story. All right, this is uh, Hawker Lightning, 81904 Alpha, taxiing out. Uh, I was just gonna say, it is it is looking a little rainy and I'm getting, getting a little bit of wind back here, but you know, it is what it is, we'll figure it out. We're about to go through a little rainstorm here. And I'm actually being blown sideways right now. Yeah, that was close. My friend and I were flying a tight formation out to the Alaska Airmen's Association show and shine, which is essentially a car show, but for aviation people. And so we take our airplanes out and we compete to see who's best in category. In this specific event, we weren't even flying. This was a static event, which means we flew our aircraft there, we parked it for the day, and then we came back and we flew home. And that was it. People just voted on your airplane. So this wasn't even really a flying event, but we had to get our aircraft to the fairgrounds to be judged. To do that, we had to depart Merrill Field in Anchorage, and we needed to fly out to Palmer, which by car takes you about 45 minutes to an hour. By air, it takes about 15 minutes. So we're already starting off with a 15 minute flight in a really familiar destination. However, when we were landing at the fairgrounds, this isn't like a runway. This is a 1500 foot gravel section of parking lot. And 1500 feet to a lot of people that don't fly the type of aircraft that I fly, 1500 feet sounds really short. I need about 200 feet when it's just me and full fuel in my aircraft. So when I see 1500 feet, I think that is a really long runway. And so in my mind, I was thinking, this is already a long runway, it's gravel, it's improved, so this is going to be a very uneventful landing for me. When we were coming in, there is a set of power lines that last year an aircraft clipped on the way into the show and shine and caused some damage to the power lines. On the departure, they have your 50 foot trees, basically. So it's kind of a steep approach getting in and it's definitely a steep approach getting out. But again, this is something that my aircraft was designed to do. So we took off out of Merrill and Right away, I started, you know, looking back, especially looking back at the footage, there were definitely opportunities to recognize what could be coming down the road. And for whatever reason, I just kind of ignored them because I was still in my head thinking, this is a really easy landing at a really easy location. Like nothing is going to be eventful about what we're doing. So we took off out of Merrill Field and my buddy was in tight formation behind me. Once we got out of Merrill's airspace and we went on to our own Unicom frequency where we could chat air to air with each other, he let me know that on departure, he picked up my rotor. He picked up a little bit of wake turbulence off of me. Now we're not big airplanes, but when little airplanes get close to another little airplane, you can pick up the wind that is being disrupted as it comes over the wings and you start getting vortexes. And so Jeff picked up a vortex and kind of got rolled a bit. Now he didn't roll the airplane, but he got rolled. That should have been my first cue that I should be paying attention to that when I'm in tight formation. That said, I've flown in formation a ton, a ton of formation flying. Tight formation, loose formation, side-by-side -side formation. I've done it all. Air-to-air -air photography, love doing that kind of stuff. So again, this wasn't unnatural for me. And hearing someone say, oh, I picked up your rotor as you departed, again, wasn't really a red flag to me because we get that occasionally. On the way out to Palmer, we started having some radio frequency issues. Hey, Jeff, yep. As your cub 14 Mike is uh, mid left downwind, uh, preparing to turn left base for 2 5. Jeff, yep. Where are you at, Jeff? Where are you going, Jeff? The way that they want you to come into the fairgrounds, you have to be on one frequency talking to fairgrounds traffic. At the same time, you also have to be talking to and monitoring Palmer traffic, which is an airport. So there's an airport right next to the fairgrounds. So you have traffic at both locations and it's very easy to get frequency confusion, which is exactly what happened to us. Now, I'm a retired air traffic controller. Frequency is kind of my thing. <laughs> Being on the radios is kind of my thing. And being able to pick up the big picture is again, my thing. And so we were 
Coming into the fairgrounds, we were supposed to be on one frequency. We were supposed to be monitoring another frequency. Well, when you only have two radios in your aircraft, you can't have three frequencies up at the same time, and that was what was happening to us. Jeff and I were talking on one frequency, but we needed to be on two different frequencies. And when we were in tight formation like that, we really needed to be able to communicate with each other. And at this point, this was red flag number two. And I really should have backed off at that point. I let Jeff get ahead of me. I should have actually broken off and I should have gone on my own instead of staying in tight formation. So now we're at red flag number two. As you watch the video, you're going to see Jeff and I are not talking anymore, and I'm trying to figure out what frequency he's on because I need to be on fairgrounds traffic so we can land. Red flag number three was when I was coming in on downwind turning base, and I looked down and I saw that we had a pretty strong crosswind, and there was a lot of mechanical turbulence along the way, buildings, trees, etc., which causes disruptions in air. And so as you come in to land, you have different forces blowing on the side of your aircraft at different speeds and rates, which causes some turbulence very low to the ground. Then going back to red flag number one, I was in tight formation and he had put his flaps in, which means he was starting to get what's called dirty. The aircraft is no longer clean flying through the air. It's trying to slow down, so it's ploying its flaps to be able to slow down, making the aircraft dirtier, not as efficient through the air. So I saw flaps come in. Well, when flaps come in like that and the aircraft gets slow and dirty, that's where you start getting bigger wake turbulence. If you remember, when Jeff departed, he picked up my wake turbulence because he was behind me in tight formation. Now I'm behind him landing with mechanical turbulence and rotors coming off of his aircraft. We were also very, very tight. As we came over the power lines and dropped in, I picked up Jeff's rotor and I picked up a strong rotor. And at the same time, right as I touched down, I picked up a huge gust of wind coming from the side, which basically, as you can see in the footage, yawed me very hard to the right. In fact, you can actually see it pick up my left wheel. In a situation like this, you're primed for what's called a ground loop, which is when you're on the ground, having the tail of the aircraft come whip around. That usually puts a wingtip in the ground, usually causes your prop to strike the ground, and causes a lot of damage to the aircraft, including gearbox damage. You, you can do all kinds of stuff to the airplane when you do that. Most of the time, it's gonna need a rebuild. Right as I touched down, I got that gust of wind and I was already in his rotor. Now, let's be really honest here. I should have gone around from the get-go. I was way close behind Jeff. He was already slowing down. I basically had three options. Go around, force the landing, which I did. And then the other option was hit Jeff. That wasn't an option. <laughs> so basically we had two really bad options and one good option. And I stuck with one of the bad options, which almost caused me to wreck my aircraft. Yeah, it was close. Oh, I got his rotor on that one. F so what did I learn out of this whole thing? Every time I go fly, I try to learn something. Even though I'm a very high time pilot, I have a ton of time in tailwheel. Every time I go fly, it's a learning experience. For me, this was a learning experience. I recognized that I had three red flags. In fact, as soon as I hit the ground, I knew what was happening and I knew that I had missed my previous red flags and I knew it immediately. And that's one of those really bad situations that you get into going, well, I ignored these red flags and this is the consequence I'm dealing with. So, moral of the story, when in doubt, break off your tight formation. When in doubt, go around. And when in doubt, sometimes it's best to leave the area, evaluate the situation, and try it again. So that's what I'm taking away from this incident. Now, that said, once we were on the ground at the fair, the Hawk Wagon did great. Uh, we actually won the light touring class, which was kind of neat. And uh, we got a free case of oil out of the deal. Thank you, Aircraft Spruce. And we also got a $100 gift card to Aircraft Spruce, which, I mean, I'm in Aircraft Spruce all the time, so that was phenomenal. But long story short, it was a great adventure. At the end of the day, I did learn a ton, and uh, we didn't wreck an airplane, so I'm gonna call that a win. That was, that was fun.